I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. Today is my weekly mailbag series where I answer your photography questions from around the world about all things photography. Sometimes it's kind of personal too. I've got one or two of those I might sneak in today, but I answer my five favorite questions from you guys which you have sent me through Instagram and I really appreciate that. Sorry I also haven't been online or I haven't been putting new videos out recently. I'm a little bit behind on my weekly assignment challenge, but don't worry, even if I don't do like a full video every single Friday on Instagram and on YouTube stories, I will still release the theme. Sometimes I wait till Saturday, but it's been hectic because all of my clients are trying to cram in all these photo shoots before the end of the year. I've got a Leica workshop coming up. I just shot three assignments last week. Things are getting hectic, but I don't want to get away from this because I love you guys and I love doing this. So, so let's get into it. Let's answer your photography questions. As always, guys, don't forget to check out my online store just in time for the holidays. I've got prints as low as $99 with free shipping worldwide. I've got my presets that will not make you a better photographer, but they will add some pop to your images. Those start as low as $4.99, and I've got my one-on-one -on -one sessions starting as low as $99 for a one-hour Zoom session with you and me. I've got bundles. I've got assignment packages, a lot of one-on-one -on -one learning on there. Check all of that out at justinmott.com. So let's get into your questions that you've asked me through Instagram, and while I'm looking at this, you guys, you should check this little thing out here. I have been loving it. I did a full review here on the Moft Smart Desk Mat. If you're asking yourself, what is a smart desk mat? Well, you can check out the link here and see my full long review of this product. It's long because I absolutely love it. I've been using this product in a variety of ways and it's just like really kept my life organized. I've got my iPad here. I've got this little thing here for ergonomics. I've got my whole charging station here. Now I'm like working out of this area. It's like, it's like my portable mobile at home workstation. I take it with me kind of everywhere throughout my house. So anyway, check out that full review here. This is a really cool product. I've also got an affiliate link in the description box below. So let's get into your questions. The first question comes from Moverly Photos. This came through Instagram. The question is, do you find any limitations using your Leica equipment in the field? That is a great question. Um, Yes, of course, I have my Leica M10D, which is famously, or for some people, infamously, known for not having a screen. And with that does come some limitations. I'd say the biggest limitation is insurance or peace of mind. You know, if I take a picture that's in a tricky lighting situation or if I'm shooting at 1.4 and I don't know if I've nailed the focus, it can be limiting. Sure, I can always check on the app, but you do have to trust yourself. In the beginning, I did find it a little bit limiting, but I have trusted myself and I, I do feel like the positives outweigh the negatives. So yes, my Leica M10D specifically without that screen, you know, no insurance policy there, but I like the freedom. I like that I'm more in the moment. I like that I'm not constantly looking at my screen and chimping. Yeah, I, I would say that's one of the limitations. Uh, another one, occasionally autofocus. You know, I do shoot wildlife, but I usually shoot it in a more controlled environment, so I don't typically need autofocus. But yeah, I could see that every once in a while being a problem. But again, not typically, and really the positives way outweigh the negatives. So the biggest limitations for me with my Leica equipment are and again, M10D with a focus, but I've got my backup N10 just in case I need to check that. I need a screen or if I'm shooting with a macro L Pro adapter and I really need to check or I really need to focus using the screen, then it comes in handy. But overall, I just like the like equipment. I've talked about that extensively because it's lightweight, because it forces me into good habits or what I perceive as good habits that work for me. It makes me slow down as a photographer. It doesn't make me feel weighed down physically and mentally as a photographer. So yes, some small limitations with the Leica system, but overall, as you guys know, I absolutely love it. The great question. The next question comes from Soren Berg, and the question is, how do you make your archive future-proof? Example is some software ceased to exist. Example, Aperture. Yeah, that's a tough question. Uh, you never know what's gonna happen in the future. You never know how things are gonna change. You never know how file formats are gonna change. For me, the importance is that I just back everything up properly. Um, that's the important thing. And by that, I've done a whole separate episode about that, but just making sure you have your images, all of your images in at least two places, but I would say you should have them in two physical places, meaning a hard drive in one house, another hard drive externally somewhere else, at a friend's house or a relative's house, somewhere else, so two different physical locations. And then a third location up in the cloud somewhere, that's a minimum what I would recommend because People get robbed, you know, there's accidents, it could be a fire, all that. I've had it for clients. Clients have had a fire, lost all their wedding images, but guess what? Even though we don't promise to keep them for life, I have. And luckily for them that I actually have, because they didn't back them up like I suggested. So you should back them up how I suggest. So 
I future proof my archive in that regard that I have everything in the cloud somewhere and I also have things on physical hard drives in two locations. But yes, compatibility in the future could be a problem. So keep all the wires, keep all the connectors for all that stuff as well. Keep that stuff safe, keep it in good condition. And as far as cataloging it, as far as software, I mean, for me, that's why I just use Lightroom. Adobe has been around for a while. I know people like Capture One. I hear really good things about it. I've dabbled in it a little bit, but I just like that Adobe is a giant company. I like that they have a bunch of different software. I like they've been around for a while, so I use Lightroom for everything, but that's just what works for me. But thank you for your question. The next question comes from Eric Selstrom, and this is a personal question. I try to keep those to a minimum, mostly photography related, but why not answer something personal? If you care, why not? Who am I to say no? His question is, what are your favorite bands? Question mark. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't go deep into all of my favorite bands. I like different kinds of music at different times in my life or for different moods, but one of my favorite bands of all time is actually Iron and Wine. I love Iron and Wine. I like that's my soft side, my gentle side. Uh, I just love Sam Beam's voice. I just like a lot of the songs. I like listening to Iron and Wine when I want to be in a good mood. I like listening to it on planes when I want to go to sleep. Um, just when I'm editing. So I really, really dig Iron and Wine. I like a whole bunch of different kinds of music, different genres of music. But if I were to say one band that I really like, or one singer, that would be Iron and Wine. The next question comes from Jack J. Ross. And the question is, 35 lux or 50 lux for the first lens purchase? And he said, go, exclamation point. That's an easy one for me to answer, Jack. Uh, 35 millimeter, hands down. I mean, I've talked about that again extensively. Uh, just because such a versatile lens, so if I'm going to buy one lens or use one lens or take one lens with me, it's always a 35. I like doing portraits with a 35. I like doing documentary or reportage, just like telling stories, following people around, that kind of work with a 35 millimeter. It's great for street photography. You really can do it all. But listen, that's just what works for me. Everyone is different. Some people work well with a 50 millimeter, and that's just a focal length that they like to see. For me, a 50 millimeter is quite limiting. Sure, I like to test myself sometimes and shoot street photography with a 50 or even shoot documentary photography with a 50, but it doesn't come natural to me like a 35 millimeter does. I tend to use a 50 millimeter more for portraits. I do like my portraits a little bit pulled back, so even, even for portraits, I typically like a 35. So for me, a 35, for you, you have to figure out what works for you natively, what kind of things you're gonna be shooting and how you like to shoot those things. So I'll leave that up to you. Another question is, what are you passionate about? In addition to animal, wildlife, rescue, cycling, and Leica, uh, I guess you've kind of just summed me up there. Uh, There's another question from Eric. Sorry, Eric had a bunch of questions and I like both his questions, so I'm gonna answer them. Uh, what else am I passionate about? Um, different times of my life, different things. Photography really is a huge part of my life. When I'm not shooting for work, I'm shooting for fun. So that's kind of it. Right now I've been really into YouTube and teaching. I guess that's all photography related, but again, my one-on-one -on -one sessions, I really, really enjoy that. One-on-one -on -one teaching is a lot of fun for me because I really do get to know people well. I get to know what they're all about. And when I'm teaching one-on-one, -on -one, I really can customize my lesson and help people based on what they're trying to learn and where they're at in their career or where they're just at in general with their photography. So I've loved this YouTube experience. I've loved teaching there. But in addition to that, I'm, I'm stuff I don't talk about much on YouTube, but I'm very passionate about my family, my two dogs, and my wife especially, who I've been with for many years. My wife and I run our business together, Mott Visuals. So we work together, we travel together, and we live together. We do everything everything together. So of course, I'm very passionate about that. She's a fantastic person. I'm madly in love with her. I've been with her for a very, very long time. So if she's watching this episode, she she knows it already, but she might get a smile out of this. So great question. So yeah, outside of all that stuff, I would say not even outside, above all that stuff, I'm passionate about my wife, passionate about my dogs, and passionate about my family too, my siblings, and my mom as well. So normally I just answer five questions, but I just kind of had this rapid response here. I could show you here, it's just like this mega questions this person asked me, Daniel Gonter. Daniel, thank you, just kind of like, like vomited all these questions. Vomiting usually implies something bad. They're not bad questions, they're good questions, but you just gave me like 10 questions right away. So normally I just do five, we're gonna do a bonus lightning round here. I'm gonna just answer quickly some of Daniel's questions that he all put back to back to back to back to back. And I'll just answer some of my favorite ones. His first question is, what would be your ideal camera for you? That's easy, the Leica M10D. It's been the camera that I've been searching for my whole life, but now I haven't, I'm not looking anymore. I'm settling down with my Leica M10D. Love everything about that camera. For those of you who follow me for a while, you know why. Next question is, what's your favorite color? Blue, I know, boring, but I've got slightly blue eyes. They're probably more like grayish, but there's a little hint of blue in there. I wear blue and it brings it out. So you can always see me in a lot of blues, a lot of grays. I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to add some color in my life. But you know, when you're fat, it's like it, the darker colors hide it a little bit better. But I'm losing weight now, so maybe, maybe in the future you'll see me some brighter colors. Maybe yellow, maybe a burnt orange. I don't know. 
Who knows what the future holds? Next question is, if you could eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Well, that question should be qualified with, are there consequences? If, the conse if there's consequences, like, you know, me getting, putting on weight or just not getting any health benefits from it at all, energy-wise and just health-wise, then yeah, it's going to be different. But if we just say no consequences, favorite food, pie, I love pie, apple pie, pecan pie, blueberry pie, cherry pie, pumpkin pie, that, big pie person, big sweet tooth. Who's your favorite photographer? That uh, There's different photographers I like for different reasons, but I'd say probably the one that ha has had the biggest influence on my life would be James Noctway. For those of you that don't know, he's a famous conflict photographer, a war photographer. He was a contract photographer for Time Magazine. Um, I've always been influenced by his work. I've always liked and admired him for his approach. If you ever get a chance, watch War Photographer, the documentary about him. It's a fantastic documentary. Please just stop what you're doing. Stop watching me watch that. Um, I just like his graceful approach. I like his integrity. I like his honesty and truth in his stories. Uh, I like his compassion for his subjects. And I also like that his work is very artistic. I like the way that he plays with light and shadows. You'll see a lot of influence in my work as well. I really did learn a lot from him. I admired him a lot when I started photography and I still admire him to this day. And the last rapid fire question would be, what are some of the biggest mistakes you've made in your photography career? Daniel, I've made a ton of mistakes in my career, but I would say no big ones really pop out to me because you know, for me, the biggest thing is you're going to make mistakes. We're all going to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. I'm going to make mistakes early on in my career, the middle of my career, in the future, I'm going to make mistakes as well. The biggest thing is to not make those mistakes again and to learn from those mistakes. That's just what's going to happen. You know, you're going to mess up on things, wrong purchases, wrong way you dealt with a client, had a bad day, had a bad month, whatever it was, you know, but just learn from those mistakes. Try not to let it happen again and always try to grow and never be complacent as a photographer. So that's all the questions. Thank you guys. I love answering these mailbag questions. I appreciate you guys taking the time to ask me these questions. Sorry again, I haven't had episodes out recently, but I will get back into that. I've got a lot of different ideas, a lot of things I want to do out there. And thank you guys all for being patient with my weekly assignment challenge. Again, even if I do miss the video, I haven't, I will get to it. I will put the winners out for the last couple weeks in one maybe combo video just to make it easier for you guys. But I won't forget you guys. Your submissions have been looked at. They have been accounted for. I will judge them. Again, that's all coming soon. Thank you guys for tuning in again. Don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com. Thank you guys. Don't forget to also like, share, and subscribe. And lastly, don't forget to have a wonderful day.